We most often think of elaboration as a technique that we use in conversation or in writing to go deeper and tell more. But in this lesson, we're going to be exploring the possibilities of using elaboration as a study strategy. Study hack coming up. Some methods of elaboration, especially when used as a study strategy, include definitions, that means also parts of speech and etymologies, facts, examples, logic, data and statistics, reasons, relationships, quotes, opinions, anecdotes, and even your senses. First, let's study the idea of elaboration, elaborate on elaboration, and we will use the approaches that I just mentioned. I am going to be linking a document to this video below where you'll be able to have in written form each of the slides that I'm showing as well as each of the examples that my students and I developed in the classroom. Well, as you can see, I've elaborated on the concept of elaboration here on my whiteboard, but it looks a little messy. So for your benefit, I'm just going to show you slides of each of these ideas that I've typed up and we'll, we'll go on from there. First, let's take a look at how going into the definition of elaboration even more deeply can help us understand the concept better. Elaboration is actually the noun form of the word elaborate. The adjective form is pronounced elaborate. The verb form means to expand, work out minute details, produce or develop something with painstaking labor. Synonyms are refine, improve, amplify, and an antonym is simplify. The adjective form, elaborate, means worked out with great care and nicety of detail, executed with great minuteness, marked by intricate and often excessive detail, complicated and ornate, and of course the antonym for elaborate is simple. Okay, from my own experience, here are some facts about elaboration. People often have to be prompted to elaborate. Elaboration requires work, and elaboration allows the student to find out what he does or does not know about a concept. Now, from my own background knowledge, I know that you could use elaborating to talk about directions to get somewhere. You could be elaborating about a memory that you have, or lots of people like to elaborate about the weather. Thinking logically, if one elaborates, then the receiver of the information gets more information. If one does not elaborate, then she might leave out important details. And if a recipe lacks sufficient elaboration, then the result may be missing ingredients, or the dish might be cooked incorrectly. As you can see, many of these elaborations come from my own background knowledge. Now, we will be seeing a few things that I had to look up, but I already knew that people who want to be thoroughly understood use elaboration. I know that authors who elaborate storylines often end up with great books that people want to read. And I also know that working all the details through elaboration of a concept is a great way to analyze and learn about that concept. Now, using illustrations or putting things in pictures is also a great way of understanding concepts. Here, we're seeing elaboration of music, and here we're seeing elaboration on a drawing. Developing metaphors is a great way to elaborate on topics or concepts. In this case, elaboration is a slow train full of all types of freight and passengers painted in bright colors and tuning its whistle loudly, at least in my mind. Here are some quotes I actually looked up that have the word elaboration or elaborate in them. The second one is my favorite. An idea is a point of departure and no more. As soon as you elaborate on it, it becomes transformed by thought. Thank you, Pablo Picasso. A couple of opinions, at least from my own background knowledge, some students do not like to elaborate because they think it's too much work, and many students do not know how to elaborate because they have never been taught how to do so. Sometimes you have to be really creative in the way you consider how you're elaborating on a topic or a concept as you're learning it. Here, I've just done anything I could to 
incorporate some sort of data or statistics into my elaboration of the term or the concept elaborate. To make a good connection with the concept or the topic, if you can tell a little story about it, how something that actually happened in your own life, it probably is going to show you that you really do understand that topic, or it might likewise show you you don't really understand it. It's actually fun to incorporate your senses into elaborating on a topic or a concept. In this case, elaboration is visually represented by a long, drawn-out group of letters. And we can clap out the five syllables of the word elaboration. And of course, elaboration feels like work. Here's one of my favorite ways I used to use elaboration as a startup activity in my classroom. As students came into the room, I would give each one of them a sticky note with aspects of some concept that we're studying and before they sat down they needed to arrange those sticky notes into categories on the chalkboard under the correct labels. This served to be a really good activity and offered up a good chance for discussion as class got started so that we could get the misconceptions cleared up right away. Here are some great examples of illustrated vocabulary from a unit on persuasive techniques that my students developed. And here are some great examples of visual vocabulary that my 7th graders developed during our mythology study. Vocabulary is a very important part of learning. I really like the way this elaboration study gives both the definition of words from a book we were reading and also ask the student to write a sentence that actually includes that word and how the definition came into play in the story itself. Concept maps are great ways to elaborate. This group of concept map shows you different ideas, concepts that my students were studying and how they elaborated through the use of these concept maps. Here's another illustrated vocabulary list where each word is illustrated individually. And here's a co-created chart that my students and I made about the concept of ballast, what it looks like, different words and pictures describing this vocabulary word. And again, we have another nice concept map showing all sorts of information from an article we read on the Hindenburg. We elaborated about dialogue and other important terms in literary study and I would put these co-created charts up on the wall and put the study strategies just to the right of them so the students always knew not only what they were studying but how they were studying it. Here we see some elaboration about the specifics of utopia and dystopia as well as elaboration on deconstruction from our study on reading Lois Lowry's The Giver. If there are ideas in this video that you think could be helpful to someone else, please share. Also, consider subscribing right over here, this button in the corner, and clicking on the little bell for notification when I upload subsequent lessons. Try elaborating as a study strategy and let us know how it goes in the comments down below because we want you to never stop learning.